What's up guys, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to all of you out there before we start today's video. Just a month ago, we passed 100 subscribers and as I'm making this right now, we're approaching 200. The growth has really been phenomenal and that's all because of you guys. When I started this channel, I didn't know really what to expect. I didn't know who would watch it, whether it would just be my mum or a few people in their mother's basement. And there's nothing wrong with your mother's basement, by the way. But it's really grown, it's phenomenal. I'm really grateful to you guys and I just want to continue growing. So if you haven't already, subscribe. Thanks once again and I hope you enjoy today's video. What is up guys? So today I'm going to go through all of the costs of buying a house in the UK that you need to know about. <laughs> So this is a follow on from last week's video when I went through a checklist of how to buy a house in the UK. So if you haven't seen that one yet, I suggest you go back and watch that one. And if you've watched some of my other videos, you'll know that I own several buy to let properties in different parts of the UK. And by the end of this video, you're going to have a much clearer idea on the total cost of buying a house in the UK. So when I started in property, I didn't have a Scooby Doo. <laughs> about how much it would cost to invest in a buy to let property. I had no idea guys. I was bright eyed and bushy tailed. I wanted to get involved and I was very keen on going on my property journey. I'd heard all the stories about the guy who used to work in the corporate world and went into property full time. All the stories of how it changed his life. You know, those stories that you've heard about the guy who hated his job, had no time to do the things he loved like long walks by the river, reading poetry, writing poetry, but property came along and saved him from all of that. I I wanted a piece of that guys, I really did. So anyway, I had two key milestones. The first one was to find out exactly how property investing works. By that I mean the process. And again, you can watch my previous video for that. What are the stages that you need to go to? What professionals do you need? How do you find a good property, etc, etc. And this milestone took some effort, but the info was and is out there. I just needed to draw from the right resources, the right people, talk to people that were actually already investing, and really soak up the knowledge and put it all together for myself. Now the second milestone I found a bit trickier to get the knowledge on guys and I'm not quite sure exactly why that is. Let me know if you know why but it was definitely more of a challenge and that was around the finance side which is the purpose of this video. Obviously I've gone through the process of buying property several times over now so me and my wallet are very familiar with the costs and why they're important to know because of course you want to be able to budget your spending and calculate your profits accurately when it comes to buying a house. That's very important, especially for investment purposes, right? So let's get straight into this, guys. So first up are those legal fees. So when you pay legal fees, what are you actually paying for? Well, you're paying for the legal registration of a property at the land registry, which is a registry that the UK holds, and it's a record of who owns what properties, where, how much they sold for, etc, etc. So you're paying for the registry to be transferred to yourself. You're paying for searches to check the ownership status of a property, i.e. does it actually belong to the person selling it? Are there any existing charges on the property by third parties that would prevent it from being legally sold to you, etc. You're also paying for them to check the documentation to ensure that there's no shady or weird covenants or clauses as part of it being sold to you. Like they're only sell to you if you donate one of your kidneys to them or if you marry their firstborn as part of the agreement, yeah? No thank you guys. So this is really important stuff. I've given ridiculous examples, but you'll be surprised what's out there in covenants and agreements. And really you want a solicitor to look over that legal professional. So in terms of what legal fees cost, I'm gonna give you an answer that I really hate and that's quite annoying, but it's true. And that is that it depends. It depends on a lot of different factors. Some of the key ones being the firm you're using. So different firms charge different prices. In the same way, different garages will charge different prices to fix the same car. It does vary from firm to firm, company to company. It also depends on the type of property. So there may be more legal work to do if you are buying, say, a listed castle in Hertfordshire. That'll be the day, that'll be the dream versus buying, say, a one-bed flat in Deptford, okay? There's a difference between those two. There's more work to do in one case than the other. It also depends on the location of your property. So this is a big one, guys. As you saw in my last video and other videos, I buy up north, and generally speaking, the legal fees have been less than many of my friends who have bought down south in London. It seems to be less up north. 
So hopefully you can really understand that there's a few factors involved when it comes to legal fees. It does depend and what you pay genuinely depends on a few factors. But for what it's worth, on average, for the two properties that I've bought, which are one bed flats up north, I've paid £1,450 in legal fees. £1,450. Pounds. Guys, a pro tip for you, ask other buyers to recommend solicitors to use. Recommendations are a really, really good way of getting linked up with a good professional. And if you don't know anyone that's bought and can recommend you one, I would suggest that you do an online search and you check their reviews online, guys. You want to find a good solicitor who gives speedy responses. That is key, guys. Um, a solicitor who comes back to you quickly is worth their wait in gold really are so secondly guys is the biggest part of the total cost of buying a house and that is the deposit right the typical deposit required for a house a buy to let house in the uk is 25 percent at this moment in time so if you're buying a house for say 100k you're going to need to bring 25k to the table with your own savings or a gift from someone else or a joint venture and the bank will lend you the remaining 75 percent so typically you'll pay them over 20 or 25 years. So when it comes to mortgages, guys, we're gonna go into this a bit deeper. You can either take out an interest-only loan or a capital and interest repayment loan. When it comes to buy to let, most people take out an interest-only loan. I'm gonna explain why in a sec. Now, the first question you might be asking is, if I'm only paying off interest and I'm not actually paying off the capitals or principal, and those words are interchangeable, guys, won't I still have the whole debt left at the end of it? And the answer is yes, but yes, you'll still have the principal or the capital left at the end of it, but you need to factor in house price inflation over time and also your profits over time. So let's talk a little bit more about these. Right now, if you follow me on Instagram, if you don't, that's a hint, follow me. Um, you will have seen a post that I put up about UK and London property prices over time. I think it was since 1985 or 1986. So in this example, you can see that UK prices have risen 260% between 2000 and 2020. 260% increase guys so what that means guys is if you bought a 100k house using a 75 percent interest only buy to let mortgage in 2000 today it will be worth 260,000 pounds and you would have 185,000 pounds worth of equity so if you sold it you could pay off the 75,000 pound mortgage that you took out when you first bought it and still have 185k of profit from the equity that you've built up over time, guys. That is how house price inflation works over time. Now, imagine instead of just having one of these properties, you had, say, four of these, four £100,000 properties. So that means you would have bought them for £400,000 for four of them. And in order to do this, you would have contributed £100,000 of your own savings as the deposits. So that's £25,000 per house, and you've borrowed £300,000 worth of mortgage loans. And you did that in 2000. Fast forward to today, guys, in 2020. Today, those four houses would be worth 1.04 million pounds because they would have each gone up by 260% from 2000 to 2020 today. And as we said, if you have an interest-only mortgage, you've been paying interest-only for 20 years, so you still have mortgage loans outstanding of 300,000 pounds on those four properties. But now you have 740,000 pounds worth of equity because of house price inflation over time that happens in the UK. So now you have options. What you could do is sell, say, two of those houses for 520K, because remember now they're each worth 260K each. And you could pay off the mortgages for all of your properties because your mortgage is still worth 300,000 pounds and you've sold off two for 520,000 pounds. 520,000 pounds minus 300,000 pounds, 220,000 pounds cash. So you have that in cash and you still have two properties left right guys at the increased value guys this is how property builds you long-term generational wealth message i really really want you to understand this guys so 
please rewind these and watch it over a couple of times. Take notes if you have to, to let it sink in because once you understand this concept of how you build wealth through property, you're going to be in an incredibly strong position that very few people actually get to in life, guys. A lot of people don't understand this. So if you buy a property in the right areas, you can set yourself up to be a potential millionaire or at least in the order of hundreds of thousands of pounds, 15, 20, 30 years down the line, guys. That's how it works. And as I said again, guys, watch my last video from last week on the beginners checklist on how to research and buy buy to let property it's been really well received and there's some really good tips in there so if you want actionable practical simple to understand advice on how to get started give that a watch okay that's a promotion over so cost wise as I mentioned a deposit is 25% of a property's purchase price for buy to let mortgages these days there was a time where you could get hundred percent mortgages on buy to let properties, i.e. no deposit. We could even get 105, 110% where they'll actually give you money. Imagine that, to buy a buy to let house. That was just before I came into the banking industry pre-2008. They were literally giving away buy to let mortgage loans like Oprah gives away books. You get a car, you get a car. Everybody gets a car. It was crazy guys, but those days are long gone. And all of that was in fact quite a big contributor to the 2008 crash and since then the banking industry have really revised their lending policies off the back of it i think it will be a long long while off before you see those types of lending products come onto the market again if ever guys so next are valuation fees so sometimes a lender will pay this for you and sometimes they make you pay it really depends on the mortgage product that you actually choose so this covers the cost of valuing a property that you've agreed to buy now why is valuation important i find the best way to explain this is to Imagine yourself as the bank manager or the bank. And imagine Joe Bloggs comes to you with an application for a buy to let loan for a one bed flat in Doncaster. And Joe wants you to lend him two million pounds so he can buy the property. Two million pounds for a one bed flat in Doncaster. As the bank, what is your next thought gonna be? Well, you know that one bed flats in Doncaster don't cost two million pounds. Not in this universe, guys but Joe says that that's how much it costs and he wants you to give him that loan of two million pounds ASAP. Well, your next step is going to be to somehow verify whether the flat is worth two million pounds or not because you're not gonna give him two million pounds of your own money on a flat that's actually worth say 60,000 pounds. That would be ridiculous, right? So how do you verify? Well, banks do this by asking a professional valuer to go and value the property tell them how much it's actually worth and then they lend you the money so if they say if the valuer said it was worth two thousand pounds and you as a bank would have the green light and say okay it's worth two million pounds very unlikely very odd i guess it's a mansion in doncaster but there you go they validated it and you can lend the two million pounds if you so choose to i hope that makes sense so in terms of costs right for valuations i paid 150 pounds and 230 pounds both for standard valuation one bed flats up north. Now that's just a valuation guys, it's not a survey which is a bit more comprehensive but that's sort of a guide on how much a valuation costs up north. In London it will probably be a few hundred pounds more expensive than that. Now next let's talk about stamp duty guys and the recent stamp duty cut. So stamp duty is a tax you pay on property purchases and it's the second largest component of the total cost of buying a house guys. How much you pay depends on when you bought the property and how much you're going to pay for it. So right now in the UK, if you're buying a buy to let property in the UK and you don't already own a property, you don't already own a property, there's no stamp duty to pay if your property is 500K or below, no stamp duty to pay. Anything between 500K up to 925K, you're gonna pay 5% of the property's sale price in stamp duty tax. So for example, if you buy a buy to let property at 400K and you have no properties already, you're gonna pay zero tax. If you buy a property costing 600K, you're gonna pay 0% on the first zero to 500K and then 5% on the 500K to 600K, that 100K increment. So in total on a 600K property, buy to let property, if it's your first one, you're gonna pay 5K altogether tax. Now, if you already own a property, right? You're going to pay an additional 3% surcharge, okay? On top of the actual stamp duty rates. So in that example, I just paid for a property worth 600K. You're going to pay 3% on the first 500K 
plus 8% on the next 100K. So that's 23K altogether. Now you can clearly see that with more expensive properties, guys, the stamp duty becomes very heavy, guys. So my pro tip is to target cheaper properties in growing areas, such as up north. That's what I do. Um, your strategy might be different, but you can see the obvious savings that are involved in that. Now, lastly is buildings insurance. The average cost of buildings insurance is around about £100 per annum, and it covers the cost of repairing damage to the structure of your property and the cost of replacing items such as pipes, cables, and drains. Now, buildings insurance usually covers loss or damage caused by things such as fire, explosions, storms, floods, earthquakes, etc. Yeah, so you're covered for that. So those are, guys, my costs, the key costs of buying a house in the UK. Um, I hope that's really helpful for you guys and it gives you an idea of what you need to pay when it comes to buying a house in the UK. I hope that's informative, guys. As I said, watch again if you need to, make notes, and I hope this helps you in your property journey. If you haven't already, like, share, and subscribe for more videos every week, and I'll see you next time, guys.